the Weekend Warriors Fishing Podcast. Today we have another super exciting episode. Uh, we have a Canadian boy, Josh McFadden. Uh, I believe you're, you're from Manitoba, aren't you? Yeah, you bet. There you go. He's not too far away from us, Saskatchewan boys. Josh is a adventurer, uh, content creator, um, chef. Uh, what else do you do? Um, I wear a lot of hats, and I think uh, I think you covered them mostly there the only thing that i'll correct you on is that i i'm really funny when it comes to titles and i hate wearing the title chef because uh -oh. i don't feel like not that i haven't earned the title chef but i i <laughs> I, I envision a chef as somebody who like leads a kitchen and a crew and does the whole uh kitchen restaurant lifestyle thing and i've made yeah, a yeah. i've made a point of avoiding that um just because i I don't like the whole kitchen restaurant lifestyle. The hours are difficult and it's a, uh, it's a job. Yeah. It's a job. Um, and what I do is still a job, but it's, uh, it's, it's kind of at my own leisure and, and uh, it's, it's different. I get to work with a whole bunch of different people, feed people in random places. And uh, I, anybody else would say, Hey, that guy's a chef. But for me, I just have like a weird personal hang up with it. So Every time someone calls me a chef, yeah. I'm like, oh, I'm just like a cooker guy. I like making food outside. <laughs> yeah. I just make it really awkward. Outside. So, yeah. So no one knows, what, no one knows what to call it. Yes, that's the key component, outside. So, yeah, Josh, you obviously, I don't know if anybody isn't following Josh on Instagram, definitely go toss him a follow. I think it's Josh McFads. Um, yeah. He posts some unbelievable content. Not only, like, he obviously cooks, but he takes absolutely fantastic um, photo, video content um, and displays that all over his page as well as a lot of outdoor um, content throughout Canada and a lot of other adventures. I mean, I think today I seen you posted you're like crawling out of a cave or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was uh, that was a cave in the middle of the bush in uh, British Columbia and it's pretty, it's pretty cool. It's a little bit of a secret spot, but uh, it's not a tourist attraction, that's for sure, but it's, yeah, really unique. Yeah, I think I think one right thing on. when you said to check out his Instagram uh, might not be something that you want to do when you're hungry because look looking <laughs> at some of those dishes on there, it's like this is almost torture. You're sitting there like, man, I'd love to try that, love to try that. So it's definitely a good thing to check out, right? But yeah, it's kind of like almost going grocery shopping when you're hungry. Not not, not the best idea. I, I get the same thing, man. Like when I look at photos that I've taken, I make food that I like to like to make right like that i would like to eat so i always see it and uh you i'm i'm hungry all the time so like i see it and i'm like man like i could really i could really use that right about now and the part that nobody gets to see i've had this conversation a few times but the part that nobody gets to see behind the scenes is that a lot of the food that i make if i'm you know making it and staging it and making it look all pretty i'm exhausted yeah. by the time i'm done <laughs> doing all of that and there's so many things that like i did all day to make this like one little thing come together that i like i have a couple yeah. bites and i'm sort of done so people ask me often like hey do you eat the way that you present on social media all the time at home like every meal and the answer is well i like kind of yes like i get to look at it but half the time yeah. i'm like man like you know after a hard day of work sometimes you're just so exhausted you don't know if you have a headache or if you're supposed to eat or drink or just go to bed and i get that yep. i get that after making today. food all of the time yeah today's one of those days for sure <laughs> but it's like it's so exhausting sometimes that it's like man i'm not even sure i want to eat this right now but it's always it's always great and it always looks kind of nice but um sometimes it's hard to eat it so yeah i, I get the same feeling looking at my stuff i feel hungry yeah, I, I think that's a, I think that's a thing that's important too with with lots of your stuff, and we'll get into it later. But um, I've seen this trend on TikTok where basically the guys like, is this actually good food or is it just internet food where it it looks good but it's really right. not practical. It doesn't taste good probably at all. So that's why I like about looking at your stuff because you can tell like this is different. Like it looks good because of the way you've you've got it staged and, and you've got it set up so nicely, but you you can just tell looking at it like that thing's gonna taste amazing even if you are exhausted yeah there's it's really it's really simple stuff like sometimes it takes a long time to whatever make make one ingredient that goes into it but it's all pretty common ingredients that people are used to aside from 
the wild game element that is usually incorporated in there somewhere. That's the yeah. That's the less common part of it, <laughs> but it's common for outdoors guys, I guess. But yeah, guys and gals. But yeah, it's just different for the yeah. different for the regular uh, average eating folk. Yeah. I think that's uh, one thing I want to mention before we really got into the bones of, the, of this interview kind of thing was that that's one of the reasons I was really excited when you said you'd come on, um, I guess, and to mention in short notice too, we just messaged you yesterday, I believe, right? So um, yeah. I was very excited because I, I love to cook. Um, most of it's just kind of like, I think this would be good with this, but especially I've gotten into hunting in the last, I guess this is my second year now. And I just, I love cool. trying to make other things like with whether it's deer, goose, duck, grouse stuff like that right so um i've watched a lot of your stuff um especially with a lot of the travel or the hunt fish manitoba stuff um and learned a lot there but that was i was pumped when, when you said you come on i was like this is this is the kind of stuff i like to do right so i just want, I wanted to mention that too but um, I... yeah that's a cool point i i think what a lot of people miss i say this often with wild game is that you know somebody gets into hunting or somebody has been hunting a long time and they've eaten the game in the same way year after year after year and you sort of lose the uh not only just the creativity but just the thought that oh i can eat this the same way that i eat chicken or beef or pork or really anything else right so when you tell somebody that you can make like chicken pot pie but with a grouse it's almost like a foreign concept right like oh you can put grouse in a chicken pot pie well of course you can it's bird meat right mm-hmm. like you you can you can replace really any recipe that's out there at all uh sub beef with deer chunk and you're good to go right so um i think yeah. it's just it's so foreign for some people to think that way especially hunters who i mean for the most part hunters typically aren't cooks they know how to throw a burger on the grill and that's kind of the extent of it um yeah traditionally or how to overcook overcook R- ring some sausage yeah, yeah ring exactly sausage. heat up <laughs> heat up a sausage over uh over a you know a big buddy heater in the ice shack kind of thing <laughs> and that's sort of the you know the cooking skills that uh that outdoors folk typically have but it's it's changing so much and it's amazing like having the opportunity to show people uh you know especially outdoors people the ability to or enhance their ability to, to cook in some sort of way and to try just different things is super cool. And and the simplicity of it, like food, eating food doesn't have to be complicated. If, if you have time to, you know, slap some bologna on a couple pieces of bread with some mustard, you should have the time to make something else up. But it's just um, a creative idea that's missing there, right? So if you have those tools in your toolbox and you know how to smoke, a, you know, a chunk of venison and it's sitting in the free fridge that you can slice into some sandwich meat like that's the that's the missing component i think that um yeah exists but if you can equip people with those tools man it's uh it's sweet you can kind of make any any food that you want mm-hmm. i think that well because you you bring a unique perspective to it right because with your with your content creation skills photo video um you like you have a, a unique way to to showcase what you're making um and if we just like crank the wheel back a little bit, um, how how did everything like come together? Like obviously, you're big into the outdoors. You do a lot of hunting. You do a lot of fishing. You do a lot of stuff with um, Hunt Fish Manitoba. Uh, obviously, you cook, and then you also do all you know photography. How did how did that all come about? Was it um, if just kind of break it down for us? How you kind of got into the whole media aspect of it? Because I feel like that's kind of where you really shine, right? Like you can cook and you can hunt and fish. Yeah. But the media aspect of it on social media and stuff is kind of what brings everything together and just displays it in a way that really resonates with people. Yeah. Like I think if I didn't have the visual product to go along with, you know, stuff that I do, um, it'd be really tough to convince people that something tastes good. Like I see food often you know, that I know is great food and I see a bad photo and it just feels like a bit of a flop, you know, (laughs) or a cell, a cell phone photo of like a really great dish at a restaurant that I've had. And I know is amazing. It's like, ah, it just doesn't, it doesn't wet my whistle in the same sort of way. And, you know, I've been cooking ever since I was a teenager and just failing in a lot of different ways in the kitchen. and, And that's allowed me to find ways to succeed. 
And I've done the same thing with photography ever since, ever since I was a kid. Like I had a digital camera, um, I'm 36 now and I have, I've had a digital camera since I was like 17 years old or 18 years old. So that's like quite a, quite a while ago and they sucked back yeah. then. Um, and <laughs> I was just taking pictures, you know, like I was taking them like they were free because they were right. It, it yeah. changed, uh, dynamically when, when that first digital, you know, unit came out and you could put photos on a card, 16 megabytes, uh, by the way, um, but uh, 16 megabytes was still better than a film camera that could take 12 shots or 24 shots, right? So it changed the game. Oh, yeah, the, absolutely. Yeah, it changed the game dynamically. And I just, again, I, I, I didn't, um, I'm not one of these guys that cares about like technical specs on something or, you know, like the bows that I shoot. I don't care what the weight or draw or length or stability, I don't care about any of that. I just want to know that I can pick it up and draw it and kill something with it. Um, and it, yeah. it, it's the same way with, you know, cooking tools and the tools of the trade, like the computers that I use and the, the, the camera and the phone that I have. It's like, I want to know that it's going to serve a purpose, but I don't care about any of the details. I want to know that my fingers can touch and it does the thing that I want it to do. Um, yes. So photography has sort of been in my back pocket all of those years. And I just, you know... Yeah, found all self-taught yeah self-taught and i found value in documenting you know um things that i that i do i don't document everything um and i'm i'm way worse at documenting my personal stuff with video than i am with photo photos are just quick for me to do and and i take a lot of joy in it um video is a little bit more of a process but but yeah i just that that's kind of it man like i I, I learned that creative side. Like I've always been a little bit creative and I fumbled through creative stuff in high school um, because you're allowed to be creative in school, but only so creative. And as long as you fit their box, then that's okay. But if you think outside yes. of, if you think outside of a, a box of any sort of system, uh, you get ridiculed for it. And I was beaten up for thinking different and I have my whole life. Right. So um, yeah. I think I, like I would, anybody listening, like I highly encourage you if you're, if you think differently, man, like, uh, I, I stress strong, Kudos. do, do something different and be, be, be different, yeah. you know, like be as unique as possible. And it's really hard to like see through the smoke with that type of stuff. But, um, especially if you're a sensitive person who internalizes everything like me, like you don't want to let people down or, or make other people feel bad, but at the same time, you have to, you know, pursue what, what you know is right. And especially in the creative space. So I'm kind of going on a little bit of a tangent there, but, um, I think that, you know, in the, in the food space, I always wanted to be creative there as well. And when I graduated high school, uh, I think when I was, um, you know, in the, in the speech or whatever it was, when I graduated, I had mentioned that I wanted yeah. to be a restaurateur. I wanted to have a restaurant and I've always had that food bug, but I quickly learned that yeah. restaurants aren't for me because restaurants are a, a system that you can put in a box. And I, yeah. I did, I, I don't fit in boxes. So, um, social, <laughs> social media is one of the greatest things for people like, like that, you know, that there's so many successful people on YouTube and, and on Instagram who show people new ways to cook food and to, in, uh, you know, be creative. And, uh, they, they never cooked in a, in a, you know, commercial kitchen a day in their life. And they're just home cooks yes. and home chefs who, uh, flex their create creativity and, and either they're unique in their entertainment or they're unique in the way that they teach people or unique in the way that they com you know, comprise a dish. And I think that that's pretty amazing. So for me, like I always admire that. And, uh, if I can, you know, stretch, my creative brain a little bit and make something that tastes and looks unique on a plate and then i can photograph photograph that and edit it in a unique way that's kind of a a win yeah. a win for me so anyhow it's it's gone on for a long time i've been doing cooking and and things and with the wild food i've always eaten game like i grew up hunting and eating different things and not really appreciating the way that I was fed wild food when I was younger. It was good, but it was just not amazing. Um, so I changed, yeah. changed the way that I prepared stuff and consumed things. And now I, I love it. And I just want to share that with other people. I want other people to know, especially 
uh, in the outdoor space that your food doesn't need to taste like crap, especially wild game. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's... No, and it's... <laughs> you you got to go? Go okay. ahead there. Um, I, no, I was just going to say, I'm sure you've heard this a thousand times, or a thousand too many times, um, especially when it comes to game is, oh, I always heard that tastes like explicit, right? <laughs> kind of thing. Like it's, um, right. I, that's something I've heard. Like I, I tried crane for the first time this year and I heard tons of people say it was terrible. And then some people say it was good. And then I think the biggest thing is like, first time I tried duck, I was like, I don't like this at all. And it, I cooked it, but then I learned that I way overcooked it. It, it tasted like crap, yeah. but I didn't really prepare it right. The next time I did some, I think it was pan seared duck with a bit of fat and the skin on the top of the breast. And I was like, this is better than steak. And so I think it's a big thing is like you're saying, it's, it's how you prepare it and finding different ways to do it rather than like Brandon mentioned or mentioned, like making your deer just into sausage or just into like a burger and stuff like that. Like the kind of typical things guys do. Right. And then you said, yeah. growing up hunting not really appreciating i guess what you what you had or not getting to appreciate the flavors that you had because it was probably being cooked that same way that everyone else does it right yeah it's a huge method thing like if you if you know some really simple methods on you know when it when it comes to preparation of food and just cooking methods you can change the way that everything tastes and the way that you prepare everything um and it's 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 really not that difficult but most people don't have, like, why would you have those skills, right? If, if you just lived your normal life yes. and went to, you know, school and junior high and high school and graduated, well, why would you have <laughs> those skills? Mm-hmm. And um, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty, pretty normal. But again, we have the luxury of having social media and cell phones, you know, at our disposal at any second. And we can learn how to become an amazing chef while we're using the bathroom, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. For sure, I'm, I might take that up. I might take that <laughs> yeah, up. Yeah, Use your that out. use your uh, bathroom breaks, uh, learning how to cook food, and you'll be a lot farther ahead. Instead instead of looking at fish picks, I'll I'm gonna check out. Yeah, switch piece. it up a little bit. You know, a couple fish yeah, picks, yeah, a couple food go. picks. You know, you got to mix it up. Okay, so while we're on the fish topic, yeah. Um, how 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 did you get involved with Hunt Fish Manitoba? Um, you know, doing um, some, you know, fishing related uh, content with, you know, another big name, Jay Siemens and, and uh, moving along with Travel Manitoba. How did you get involved with that? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm trying to think like where to, where to start with that. Um, kind of like anything, you sort of fumble into it and, and some, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, a measure of creating ex- opportunities for yourself and then opportunities kind of falling on your lap and um i was i was working doing some media and marketing work for a brand an apparel brand that jay where we had we had hired jay to do some stuff back in the day and i think that was you know i'd been watching his videos and stuff and knew that he was a part of uncut for quite some time and maybe interacted with each other loosely on social media a little bit but i've always had an attraction to fishing and and fishing lifestyle and, and whatever. So Jay and uh, Aaron were always sort of a part of that. Um, and uh, for, well, I'm a little older than Jay, but for a while anyhow. And, and yeah, so oh, I would never have guessed. Yeah. So we started like work doing, doing some stuff like here and there together. And then uh, I had started my own uh, media and marketing company with, with some friends and was doing more of the social media stuff on my own, my, my personal brand stuff at the same time. And yep. just started interacting more with Jay and having some conversations going back and forth. And somewhere in there, I had started an outdoors brand as well. Um, that was media based like uh, magazine and um, some YouTube content and whatever. Um, some, appar- yeah. some apparel mixed in there too. A lot of people doing that. And, and then, yeah, so there was, there was some sort of, you know, interaction with Jay through that whole time period. And then one day, uh, man, quite a few years ago now, we just got together, did some fishing and uh, started talking about doing, doing a brand together and, um, you know, coming up with a product that he could 
monetize his audience in a way and and sell sell a product to them but also just have a brand that was unique on its own too like not jay siemens fish batter it was you know <laughs> catch and cook yeah. right and and so we started yeah. brainstorming what those things would be and leveraging my skill sets um you know my ability to make food and take photos of it right now and have it live within 20 minutes as possible and that is, uh, you know, that's something that's amazing, an amazing asset to have within a business. And I realized that. And I realized that companies that I was doing work with, um, it's, it's rare to be able to find content for cheap and to find good content for cheap and to be able to turn it out yeah. within minutes. Like, it's, it's impossible. So since we're both content creators, we thought, man, we could really leverage that uh, because that's a huge part of um, startup for a lot of businesses these days and just being able to have a little bit of know-how like building our own website and coming up with some sort of creative we work with an amazing designer uh, who happens to be a friend of Jay's from when he was younger and he helped us with all yep. the catch and cook stuff so just even back then we started dreaming up ideas and coming up with well what's the product well we sort of settled on coding because it seemed like a bland space, you know, like what is every angler, at least in, you know, the Midwest and through Canada, maybe not out in BC, but what, what does everyone do when they're out fishing with the, the gang and, and a shore lunch was kind of the, the answer, right? And everybody's mm -hmm. engaging with, with fish coating at some point and stopping at the gas station or stopping at the bait and tackle shop uh, to pick some up. And all the other brands out there are just sort of stagnant. No one's paying attention to them. There's zero marketing going into them. They just sort of sit on the shelf at a lot of different gas stations and grocery stores, uh, but they're not exciting. So we want to create a package that people would want to interact with on social media and felt quality, something that was waterproof and just like a hearty, cool package. And we also looked at the coffee industry in a way because you know, 10 years ago, there it is. Beautiful. Got some right in front of you. That's amazing. I got a bag right. I got a bag right here. That's so good. And it, I made sure that I had a bag. And it probably feels so quality and <laughs> amazing and supple. Uh, but yeah, we, we looked at the coffee industry and yeah, years ago, if you look, if you remember back in the coffee section at the grocery store, there was like Folgers and Nabob and maybe the Tim Hortons cans. And that was kind of it. And now there's... Yeah you know, 60 different options of really cool looking brands and bags at the grocery store, different coffees. And we thought, man, like what stands out to us? What looks attractive? We both really like kicking horse coffee and uh, their branding and all of that. So we're like, man, a black bag is pretty cool. And uh, yeah. we, we just sort of took from Adam to make Eve kind of thing and came up with this brand. And fortunately enough, the term catch and cook is used all over the internet um it's pretty buzzy on youtube and in the social media space the term catch and cook mm -hmm. uh, much like shore lunch was back in the day and still is used i still say shore lunch all the time and you can buy shore lunch products so yep. we sort of yes. you know yep. borrowed from all these different ideas and just took something that was dated and put some lipstick on the pig and made it look fresh right um and we're having a lot of fun with it. It's uh, it's going really, really great. We've got some new things coming out. There's some new products coming out. Uh, we just launched our knife. Uh, that knife is sick. <laughs> we're pretty we're pretty happy with the knife. Man, it was wild because when we were thinking about a folding, filleting, boning knife, there's nothing out there, which was sort of strange. Like you can't just go to the store and buy a folding, filleting knife. Mm -hmm. um, so we yeah. thought it made a lot of sense just to toss, you know, something to have to toss in a tackle box or throw in your backpack. It fits in the pockets of most of my pants that I wear, which I think is amazing. Um, so we're pretty excited about that. And that's, you know, been received really, really well. And um, we've got another uh, coating product coming out in the next few weeks here, at least uh, for Chris the Christmas season. And uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of it. So it's, I don't know what the uh, original question was and I'm just rambling here, but <laughs> catch and cook buy buy catch and cook. Yeah, no, th yeah, I originally had asked uh, kind of about Hunt Fish Manitoba and how kind of you got connected. Oh, with yeah, that right, and, and then how and I got Jay, connected with Jay, Jay Siemens. And, yeah, and then obviously you and Jay made that connections. And, yeah, for those of you listening that may not know 
uh, that Josh is half the brains of a company called Catch and Cook. Now you know. He basically just gave you a full rundown of exactly yeah. how it came to fruition. Uh, Catch and Cook, they, uh, Josh and uh, partner Jay put pull together. It's, uh, it's a coding uh, for you know game coding. I mean, whatever you want to do, use it for your, your hunting, your fishing. If you want to just make chicken wings with it, I've done that too. Um, but yeah, so he is partner in Catch and Cook Coding. And uh, man, it is pretty dang good. I mean, I have the original one. I'm waiting yet to pick up one of the spicy or the flame um, <laughs> package because I'm a spicy guy and I've been waiting. I just haven't pulled the trigger or when I go into Pokey's Tackle Shop here in Regina, I haven't found it yet. Um, but yeah, I'm I looking think, forward I to trying that Pokey's one. I think Pokey's is uh, getting some product in very soon, actually. So um, there you go. But yeah, we'll have to. We'll use have the to, listeners. We'll have to get some uh, get some sent out for you fellas. And um, yeah, it's like it's just a, you know, I'm the recipe guy kind of behind it. Jay's the lover of fried food guy and, mm-hmm. and <laughs> natural natural promoter of, of cool things. And and it's uh, yeah, it's just a big great deep fry guy. Yeah, big deep fry man. And it's a, it's a great it's a great partnership. <laughs> and uh, we're just having so much fun with it and it's been received really really well so lots of uh uh lots of hashtag big things coming uh, yeah. down the down the pipe hashtag big things coming. don't want to spill too many beans yeah no we're not spilling all the beans but there's some there, there's there's some good stuff coming and the christmas the christmas bundle that we're putting together is going to be pretty sweet so as soon as that goes live you're gonna want to get your hands on one of those yeah we'll have to check that out for there sure I, I i was gonna say when you mentioned the knife there i saw uh, previous guest Zach Brown there. I think he was dealing with a whole moose leg or something like that with with that <laughs> knife. And I was like, man, this this thing's made for everything, right? He it's he was it's hardy. Probably cutting up a squirrel to <laughs> freaking fish for pike. Yeah, no no kidding. Yeah, he was like he he was petting his cat with it. Yeah, I saw and, that. Uh, yeah. He, he keeps on <laughs> he keeps on begging me to rebrand the the company Cat and cook and just like oh. full, full caps cats well, i'm like eh, i don't know i'm not a big cat guy myself i like cats but i like them at a distance I mean, yeah i mean technically technically i'm looking at the big right now and it's all caps it is so you'd have okay, to so lowercase you'd have to make small cap. yeah lowercase cap yeah you'd have to you'd have to make this yeah lower you have to do or lowercase little c in there maybe H-A-P. maybe next uh next april fools will have to come up with a cat version and put cats all over the bag and kind of do a little a little uh shout out on social media for it but um i didn't want to miss yeah. or go ahead or just fill a bit or just fill a bag with cat litter and send it to <laughs> that's actually a very great idea you might get you might get a little special gift in the mail soon here yeah no and as uh, much i oh go ahead well i was just gonna say i didn't want to miss the travel manitoba part of it or the hunt fish mb part of the conversation as well and that's just been a real great experience for me too like making connections there it's it's again one of those things like finding opportunities and having opportunities fall on your lap and i've just made some really good friends that are um you know that work there and and yeah. that's kind of like the rest is, is history just when you can find good people to be friends with and uh and work with uh, at the same time it just seems like a cool kind of natural fit and yeah pretty fortunate to be able to work with those fellas over there yeah i think uh i i just started talking to well so little little context to this um i went did a uh, one of i guess I think my second ever fishing trip to manitoba at the start of august i believe we went up to clear water um and did some lakes around there and i had a story up asking about some other lakes because as i'm sure you know clear water doesn't take much to get too too wavy out there so we had i think we were there for a week and we only got a day and a half out on clear water um wow but i I put up a story and i had this guy respond um and i was gonna ask you how you pronounce his name because i watched jay's new lake trout video today um at the start of it he called him keevan and (laughs) halfway through he called him kevin um and then on his instagram (laughs) it looks like it's keevan which one is it it's keevan okay that's what I thought. It's a uh, it's Kevin. So many people ask me how Kevin's doing, and I just naturally start telling them that Kevin's doing okay. Um, it's Kevin, but everybody gets it wrong. Um, yeah. Okay. But once you once you 
once you get to know him, he's for sure a Keevan, even though I don't know what a Keevan is. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, he's the only Keevan, I think, on the planet, and he's definitely uh, a Keevan. Yeah, for sure. And 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 he likes elk. Yes. Yeah, he's a big, he's an elk fella. Um, he's so fortunate to have elk property um, and a lot of it um, to hunt in, in the family and whatnot. And it's it's pretty unbelievable. The I've had a few seasons now bear hunting with him and we hunt in his elk woods, his sacred elk woods. And there have been a few times where we've seen elk. We saw moose this spring up there and endless amounts of bears and it's just a it's it's really a little piece of heaven up there so he's he's yeah he's got it pretty dialed yeah so i figured i'd ask that instead of just asking him uh, i'm actually currently talking to him right now on instagram but instead of just asking him i thought why not ask on the podcast and so so everyone yeah his real his real human name is keevan and his parents gave him that name so (laughs) that sounds good but i i thought this would be a good one to kind of give him a shout out on because he replied to yeah. my story and I didn't realize that he was kind of had a lot to do with the hunt fish Manitoba at that time. Um, and he replied with, with his personal page there um, and told us some lakes, the one lake between three of us, we had 170 smallies in one day. Um, so I had, I had to give him a shout out there cause he, he was huge in hooking us up with, with some places that That's we should great. try out. So yeah, he knows, it's, he knows it all. It's so, yeah. It's so refreshing to you when you have guys like that, that are, you know, open to connecting with somebody they don't know or, you know, helping out a, a fellow angler and share some spots or, you know, somebody that's never been there before and they, you know, just help them out to, get, you know, make sure they have a good experience. Like, I feel like that's that's kind of rare um, in, in, in modern day and it's, yeah. it's refreshing to hear that, you know, there's still people out there helping, you know, other people in going to new lakes and stuff like that. But, yeah, it, yeah, it no. comes down to the approach I find in those situations because if you went out and asked some guy uh for his his fishing spots you're not you're not getting any sort of you know reasonable uh reasonably friendly response um however if you approach it in the right way and you don't act like an arrogant jerk Mm -hmm. and uh you don't you know seem like the type of person who's going to exploit all of these uh you know amazing spots then you can get a lot of favor from people and it's it's pretty amazing you know it's um there's some folks out there who will approach it from a different angle and they won't get a lot yeah. of favor. And, um, I think it's just, uh, it's just tact and I've had a lot of really good fortune and, um, have gotten to know a lot of amazing people in the outdoor space who will, you know, sort of point you in the right direction and help you out. But you have to know as an outdoors person that there is a massive margin of, learning for yourself and in the foraging space for me i love sharing foraging knowledge with people because there's free food all over the ground everywhere Mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of learning right so much like a fishing situation if you go out on a day and you get skunked which happens uh (laughs) it's not a bad day of fishing it's a good day of learning you know and uh, which yeah. which is what fishing is, you know, you can't you can't catch fish every time, and you can't shoot a deer every single time you go deer hunting. It's just not reasonable to think that way, and it's uh, it's much like that in in the foraging space. You know, people get frustrated because they couldn't find what they were looking for. They didn't find the exact one that they wanted, and it's not a it's not as simple as hide and seek. It's it's a lifelong commitment to a hobby and to being a hunter gatherer, you know, like if you want to add more tools to your toolbox in that outdoor space, uh, the anthem of the weekend warrior is learn and educate yourself and, you know, just be, pa- <laughs> be patient, right? Like it's, it's a massive patience game. Preach. It took me so many years to learn one mushroom because I didn't, my dad was like a forager and stuff like that a little bit growing up and he had some knowledge, but mushrooms weren't really one of the big ones and yeah i i couldn't get any information out of anybody i would squeeze people and and nobody wanted to share their spots essentially right and giving giving somebody the opportunity to learn about a new mushroom is kind of sacrificing some of your b and c and d spots at least and uh you know i i i got nothing so i bought all of the mushroom encyclopedias and books and bibles that i could 
learned um, kind of from memory of when I would go hiking, finding things on the floor of the forest and remembering, oh, this looked like this, it smelt like that. Investigating all of the elements that a mushroom has or a wild plant has and, uh, and, and just sort of kept on, you know, one year I'd maybe learn one thing. And then another year, I learned another thing after hiking for days and days and days on end, finding nothing and coming up dry. And then you start to get smarter. <coughs> and uh, it's, it's yeah. you know, without having that passed on to you, it's, it's actually pretty tough. You know, I take hunting and fishing for granted all of the time where like the wind's different than you were expecting and the fish aren't here and they aren't there and you're just kind of mad at nature. But the reality is, you know, it's, it's half of it's you because you weren't there yesterday and the day before and the day before observing nature to learn where things go uh, when you've had wind doing something in a strange way or the moon cycles or the weather or whatever it might be. Right. So there's, there's yeah. so much to be learned and it's uh, yeah. man, when I was a kid, I had no idea what the wind, how the wind could have even played a factor in fishing. It didn't even make any sense to me. And after spending yeah. years and years and years fishing shorelines on one of the biggest lakes in the world that's you know somewhat out my back door i finally started to understand oh the wind changes the fish's eating habits and where they where they eat and and the location of their forage and uh, i i never really understood it before like how does the wind affect fishing well it affects it in a massive way aside from just being too choppy to take the boat out um <laughs> and, uh, and, and, and it's, it's, uh, it was my opportunity to learn that. Right. And, and if I didn't, well, yeah. Hey, kind of my fault, <laughs> you know? So well, you, you'd still be learning that. I'd still be learning. Which, I mean, great. you're always, you're always continuing to learn, right? Like my biggest thing is like you, you go out and you, if, if I don't have a good day on the water I last mean, weekend, just for reference <laughs> Sunday, <laughs> Logan, yeah. four days ago, uh, exactly. You know, yeah yeah i mean right if you're not catching you're learning and it's 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 a process that's never gonna end and i think that's that's the beauty of it right because i mean if if there's nothing to learn it would it get boring be fun at all if you can go out and catch you can go out and catch you know 10 pounders at the exact same spot on the exact same tactic at the exact same time what fun is that right so yeah, i think it that's the unique perspective that a lot of people um, kind of just take for granted that, um, you know, once you learn something that you just, you're going to be able to do it. But no, it's just an ongoing process. Well, it's funny too. Like I've had those days where you go to the right lake at the right time and you're catching walleye after walleye after walleye or bass after bass or perch after perch or whatever it might be. And you get tired of, of it. Like when it's that easy, like, man, like you're a hundred fish in, yeah. I don't even want to catch another one. Right. So it's, it's right. funny how quickly that does change. Um, and, uh, yeah, you, you fish for the good days. And I always say that like you fish through all the bad days, like 30 in a row so that you have one good one. And those are the days that make fishing worth it. And it's, you know, just like hunting the days that suck and you're stuck out in two degree weather with sleet falling down and your hands are frozen and animals are just nowhere to be around. You hunt through those days, um, knowing that nothing's going to happen because it's all going to come together at some point, and it'll make those days worth it. Because you have to earn those days. You can't just you can't just walk out and get a big buck day one. It happens, but um, but you didn't earn it. Yeah, exactly. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't just I, expect. And I mean, yeah. and that's with anything too, right? That's you know, hunting, fishing, but that's also you know the the multiple businesses that you have, right? You can't just go out there and expect. You can't just expect catch and cook to blow up uh, into what it is without putting in the work, right? And you, you guys obviously have put in a lot of time and effort into this company. You've put a lot of time and effort into you know the media and and you know the cooking and everything like that. And you know you are where you are because you know, you, you put in those days. Yeah, right? for sure. And not to discourage people from anything, you know, like it's, it's just a, it's just a commitment. Like if, if Jay and I hadn't pulled the trigger on making steps along the way to get catch and cook started, it wouldn't be a thing. Right. 
So yep. uh, same thing with like having a successful fish or a successful hunt. You have to take those steps and it's fun. It's just all a part of the process. If you want the end goal, you have to pursue the, the steps from one to end goal uh, and everything in between. Yeah. And that's, um, that's just, just so key. So, you know, like getting, getting anything started for sure it's work, but it's, um, it's all sort of in stride and it's a part of the process. Right. And I think that's one of the biggest things that I've learned personally over the last couple of years, just with a couple different like avenues that I've gone down and maybe a lot of people that are listening have a bunch of ideas or even you talking about, you know, being in school and, you know, having the cre- you know, creative mind and telling people if you have these creative thoughts to, you know, go after a type thing. And it's a lot of, a lot of it's just getting out of your comfort zone and, and taking that first step toward whatever it is that's in your mind. It's not going to happen if, if you don't take action toward it. It's always just going to be a thought yeah. or it's always just going to be, you know what I mean? So that's, I think one of the biggest things that I'm taking away from this conversation with you is a lot of stuff that you've done. It's been self-taught and, um, you know, has come to what it is because you've gotten uncomfortable, thought out of the box, stepped out of the box and, um, just made it happen day after day, grinded just like hunting, right. Yeah. Or fishing. And you know, you've caught that, that trophy fish or you've, now got a company that's you know on its way to becoming something amazing i mean it already is amazing but, i mean and the biggest the biggest takeaway there uh, for me like over the past number of years and the biggest asset is kind of falling in love with failing because you can't get to yes. you can't get to an end goal without failing a bunch of times and sucking at stuff and you know there's a lot of really great ideas out there and Pursuing them may not get you to that goal, but sucking really bad through the beginning stages will get you there, you know, and, and being okay with that, knowing that, man, you know, you you have to account for screw ups and failures and accidents and mistakes and stuff like that. And, um, there's, there's a lot of that and, and having the mindset to just not even, it's not even overcoming. It's just not even thinking about them, you know, like hopping over those hurdles real quick and moving on to the next thing, it's a huge asset in being able to do anything. And, uh, you know, even just, just the theme of your guys' podcast, man, it's, it's sweet. You know, like most people are, uh, they fit into that category of being the, the weekend warrior. And, um, you know, like working hard through the week, uh, working the day job, working that nine to five, like most people do. And, yeah, you know, have, having your eye on the weekend, like that is... That's that. That's the North American anthem, you know, and and being able to do that um, in a way that doesn't, uh, you know, you, you can't you can't screw up too bad during the week so that you're exhausted and can't have any fun on the weekend or you've worked yourself too hard. Like keep your eye on the prize and and that leisure time is so important for people, uh, especially for guys, you know, like for mental well being and all of that. Guys are really hard on themselves when they go to work, and uh, you know overwork themselves and absolutely put a lot of time into things and not allowing uh themselves or ourselves to you know take that time to sort of reflect and relax and and think about how you can shift things around to make things easier on yourself that's a that's a really tough thing for a lot of a lot of people and a lot of guys out there and um i think uh yeah just having having that mindset that you know failure is cool it's okay it's okay to suck and uh it just gives you an yeah. opportunity to make some changes. So if you're not making those changes, uh, you should probably start thinking about it. But uh, but cha- making change is great, and you have to you have to just sort of adapt and and learn that that's just very very much a part of the process. Yeah, I think that's something that uh, absolutely. Well, me and Brandon could probably talk about this for a long time because, on top of uh, enjoying I guess the outdoors and fishing and whatnot, we're kind of both interested in b- the business side of things as well, right? Like that's something that is yeah. another one of our hobbies, or I guess if, if you want to call that a hobby kind of thing, right? It is, is kind of seeing what you can kind of grind out and what you can do on the side and use that, use that day job as like your, your security kind of thing and then work on bettering yourself or some projects you have. And like we, even with the podcast, I don't know how long Brandon had thought about doing one before we started, but 
um like I, I had thought for a while i was kind of working on like some of my own stuff and then like we've talked about on here before we got to talking and we were like oh we both want to do it and then like i remember trying to record that first episode it's like this is so out of our comfort zone it seemed like like it was i can imagine yeah, yeah. So yeah, trying to do Dude, that. Dude, we had no we had no idea what we were doing, yeah. right? I mean, it <laughs> was still like, it was just a thought, and it was yeah, Perfect. it was just a thought though, right? Like, I mean, but we didn't know anybody would listen. We didn't know, you know, it would be we wouldn't we didn't know we were going to be talking to you or or Gord Pizer or you know a lot of these guys that have experiences and stories and and knowledge to share with uh with people that i mean you guys are already doing that on social media but audio just brings a completely different perspective and and, and, uh, an environment like so where it's just us three conversing and talking about um you know stuff that probably will never i would never reach out to you over direct message or comment on your posts you know about uh, half the stuff that we talked about today well some people do unique perspective yeah (laughs) Yeah, yeah, well, so, well, it's it's amazing what people reach out for, and like I embrace, I embrace all of it, you know. Like if somebody wants to reach out, like I, yeah. I love that, and it's so funny when um, sometimes folks will approach those DM conversations, like, "Oh, I'm so sorry to to interrupt you. I know you're busy." It's like, well, I'm on my phone, so I can't be too busy, <laughs> and uh, I'm, ch- I'm checking Instagram, so like I'm either going to bed or I'm taking a bathroom break or whatever it is, right? So it's like. Yeah. You know, like if I have if I have a minute, man, I love I love chit chatting with but people and and getting to know. Folks. If you're taking a bathroom break, if you're taking a bathroom break, you're looking at recipes. I think. Well, I I said mix it up though a little oh. bit, right? So I'll go from oh, okay. yeah, I'll I'll keep swiping right. in between uh, recipe videos and uh, and Instagram just to, just to get back to the fans, you know. <laughs> there okay. you go. Okay. And I, I think that's the thing, right? <laughs> but and is lots of people will. I actually. You, you go, Brandon. No, no, you go ahead. This is. This is not important. <laughs> oh, come on. Anything you say is important. <laughs> oh, I, I was just... I just uh, no, I just... I just had a quick comment on the fact that, <laughs> that, that basically lots of people, like you said, are like, oh, sorry for, for reaching out. But lots of these, like, lots of the people we've talked to have always said, like, yeah, reach out. I'm sure, like, don't get mad if it takes... If you message, like, someone who, who has, like, a, a lot going on, right, and they don't answer maybe in a day or two, they'll, they'll usually eventually get back to you. Um, you have yeah. to also understand that lots of times, like... I know Facebook can be bad for it on a page is they sometimes don't even see the message because either one, they don't get a notification or it's stuck in like a request folder, which you get no notification. Yeah. It gets buried. Yeah. Yeah. But lots of people will respond and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. Like um, you can, yeah, you can DM and text a lot of people and all, all I'm getting at is like, sometimes people ask some really random strange questions and it's like, who the heck is this person reaching out, yeah. right? Or, uh, f- for the most part, it's it's just great. And, like, I love it. I was honestly toying with starting some sort of service, like, ask a cook person a question for, like, five minutes. Get them on the line kind of thing. Cause there's so many people who question or who ask me, um, you know, like, hey, I'm, I'm throwing a steak on the fire tonight. And uh, what, what do I do, right? Mm -hmm. So there's this like super quick little interaction and this like fast little tutorial. And at the end of the day, I want to know how that steak turns out. So I'm always saying like, send me pictures. And honestly, sometimes people don't and I get kind of upset because (laughs) I actually, I I really do want to see like how that thing turned out that they made that I, you know, somewhat facilitated and and gave them some You pretty much cooked. I basically cooked it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. it's, it's like, it's sort of like, oh man, I created this little baby and, and, uh, you know, threw it out into the ocean and it never came back. Like, well, what the heck is, what's going on here? Just take it personally. So, <laughs> I do. Yeah, I honestly do. Um, and it's all, it's all fine. But, um, but yeah, it's like, man, I, I, I'd be pretty busy if, if I was answering, you know, DMS and questions all day, but I really do enjoy it. And. I honestly think there's a service for that. Like if I could call a plumber right now, if my pipe started leaking and I could call a plumber and figure out a way to like, just pick his brain for five, 10 minutes and then run to home Depot and fix it myself. It's kind of a handy service, you know? Yeah. So if I could get like a wild, yeah, we'll talk. wild cook on the line, we'll talk after this. Yeah. Well, here we go. Yeah, exactly. I, man, I got it. I need a plumber and electrician. I'm a pretty handy person, but uh, when it comes to some of these things, mechanic, you know, like I can dig around under, sure. under a hood, but uh Sometimes I just I just have some questions, you know. So maybe we can trade some services back and forth, and and uh, 
start a little uh, a little online collective of call yeah. call a mechanic or a cook person. There you go. Do a little horse trading. That's that's the that's the way to go about it. But uh, I don't know. I was just sitting here staring at this bag of catch and cook that's sitting <laughs> on the desk, yeah. <laughs> and I couldn't help but notice it says chef and guide approved but you said you don't call yourself a chef i know this was one of those moments man where uh you sort of start to look at the list of terms for somebody who cooks stuff yeah and you could say cook approved but then there'd be a lot of <laughs> there'd be a lot of cook there, on yeah. the package because it's catch and cook so we decided to yeah, go with chef yeah. because that sort of resonates with most people and every once in a while i'll take one for the team you know you kind of put like cooker self, guy or something. Pretty selfless guy. Yeah, I mean, cooker guy would I, I, be amazing. I, I, if I had more content out there that cooker. referred to me as a cooker guy, that's what I would have put on there. It's got to start somewhere. So when pe- when when people are looking for you on Instagram, it's at cooker guy. Yeah, J- McFad's cooker guy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if there's no cooker guy account, I better book that uh, real quick here because somebody. I'm gonna I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna create an I'll, I'm gonna create an account and I'll sell it to you. That sounds totally fair. You know what? Just run it. It's easier that way. Just run it and link everything back to me. Just rip content off the original page. Yeah, just copy and copy and paste and link it back to Josh McFads. We'll be fine. Yeah. Well, that that uh, <laughs> that was totally like a, a huge tangent there, but I think it, it was it was an important one uh, and an entertaining one. Um, I guess I, I had rails. A, <laughs> not not a bad thing for the podcast, but you never know where it's going to go. That's why I like these these conversations so much. Um. One, one thing so I good. I do have to come clean now that we're an hour into this I do have to come clean that I have not tried catch and cook yet. Um, it's oh every God. well it was sold out everywhere you couldn't get it anywhere it'd be like like someone would say like that's we'll the say, right answer. Pokies for <laughs> thank you Pokies for example. You know what Logan at least you're honest. I'm an honest guy. There's a, a lot of you know a lot of people probably wouldn't admit that so I mean yeah no that's fair yeah. I'm totally okay with that nobody likes a liar. No, and the honest. Well, Josh, the can, honest. Josh can't punch you through the screen either. So sure, that's a good thing we're we're doing this virtually. No, I. The, the, and the honest reason for it is a good one that it was sold out so much, right? Like, I know I know supply already has been an but, issue with COVID, but that's not even it. There's just so much demand for it, right? Yeah, and um, we're you guys just do a re- we're stocked up. You just do a really good job of marketing it. Yeah. Right? Well, there's so. that, and it's uh, we're we're stocked up really good now. You know, like it's really hard to estimate when you're starting something up especially a food product like i've never sold a packaged food product before and jay obviously hasn't either and um you just have no idea like we're stocking up right now uh getting product sent uh to us for the um manitoba or winnipeg ice show whatever it's called manitoba or winnipeg ice show yeah which is going to be a pretty big deal yeah. we're getting the frostbite boys down there and alex and so Aaron are showing there? Up. oh yeah i'll be there i'll be there slinging some bags of catch and cook and i'm going to take a pretty casual oh, yeah. uh casual position there because we're selling with the frostbite fellas and um yeah they're gonna sort of take care of all that stuff so i'm going to be there to shake hands and kiss babies and maybe have a beverage or two if they have a little uh beverage zone um but but yeah, well, I think it, I, I would hope so. I hope so. But yeah, I think I think it'll just be uh, pretty fantastic. There's going to be some good people there, and and uh, but yeah. Anyhow, so we're bringing stuff in for the show, and how how do you even start to estimate what to bring in, right? Like how many knives mm-hmm. do you do you bring to the show? How many bags of flame and uh, original and spices and all of these things? So it's uh, it's a little tricky, but we should have uh, some pretty pretty sweet deals going on and um uh you know enough product for when is the show it is november 6th and 7th so it's coming up in like a couple weeks here yeah so big perfect be pretty big yeah big biggest thing to hit the uh ice fishing scene in manitoba